Welcome back. In this last show of the year, I talked to Christine Cook from Estonia about how she got into sourcing, growing pipe dive from 80 to 160 people, and what tools she uses. This is a Sourcing Challenge show, and I'm your host, Mark Lundgren. I started off by asking Christine how she got into sourcing. Yeah, I think it's uh, an exciting long story, and um, I am kind of a freak in that sense that I, I like to plan and I like to dream and I then like to make my dreams come true. So I was already in ninth grade sure that I want to go into HR one day. Of course, I didn't know that there's sourcing and recruitment in HR. And then I made myself a plan on how to one day uh, become like an HR director of a huge corporation when I'm like 40 or something. And, uh, and since then, I started building up my career. So I joined an international student organization, ISIC, and did all the parts of recruitment and HR there. And, and I remember uh, the most exciting things for me were the recruitment phases when I had like a list of people who wanted to join in and a list of uh, open positions that we had. And I just spent like hours putting them together, like, thinking through everything. I was like, wow, if I could do this for a living, I, I would really love it. And, uh, and then when I finally get in, um, I worked in Pipedrive for three and a half years. So it's, it's one of the best companies in Estonia. And I've hired uh, people from 80 to 460 in a growing company. And of course, I had no clue what sourcing is. But I think one time I stumbled upon a sourcing game and I got hooked. I spent hours just like figuring out how to play them. And then I was like, wow, but you can, you can like use this in your everyday life. And, and I guess the big thing is that we all do it, but we don't necessarily call it with the name of something or something else. So, but, uh, but of course I, I do feel that I'm not a sorcerer in pure blood. I'm sorcerer, recruiter, I help HR, which is very common in Estonia that you're kind of doing all parts of it. Some people joke that it's just, company's way of uh, making sure that they have less people to hire but the people you have will do everything but I actually really uh, enjoy uh, doing like all parts of uh, people management and recruitment as well. What kind of people did you learn from or was there people that you were meeting when you were kind of starting and, and finding sourcing? Yeah the big thing for me was the first uh, social so sourcing mm -hmm. summit in Amsterdam and I, I was just amazed by all the things that you can do and listening to people who have done it for years was a huge inspiration for me and at the same time I was doing my master's studies in HR and uh, I was really disappointed because I, I was expecting to get this like information and inspiration so that I, I wouldn't have to um, kind of learn things on my own but from others as well. But then I understood that uh, master level studies necessarily don't give you that. So uh, together with uh, two of my friends, we started this um, meetup community called uh, Recruitment Thursday. So since uh, first half of 2017, every month we've been doing uh, meetups in different companies, uh, learn about recruitment in IT, of course, in um, banking sector, all these things. Uh, so, so this has been a really big thing for me to really learn how things are done and kind of get away from everyday bubble to see, uh, to see what you can do better in your daily work. And with Pipedrive, the kind of people that you're, you're recruiting and, and sourcing for, is that uh, locals or are you looking for people to relocate to Estonia or, or how do you kind of work with that? Because it's, it's quite a growth for a small country like yours. The crazy thing is that it's not only a few companies that grow like this. It's, it's a lot of people. Estonia is kind of the Silicon Valley of Europe, so we have a huge startup scene. But in our capital Tallinn, we have around 400,000 people in total. But there are a lot of startups uh, and uh, there's a huge need for people. So we, we hire globally. We make sure that all countries that are represented are there. So when you look at the news and see that one country is not doing so good, then you see, okay, that's where I start sourcing from and kind of um, um, put the opportunity forward to them. But of course, the big thing is that you just need to make sure your employer branding is there, the culture is there, and, uh, and hope that things work out. And that's why I've been focusing on employer branding a lot as well, because you can't just source people in a community where everybody knows each other. If your company is not really good, developers will know it. They will not come for it, even if your messaging is right or you have a nice subject title or something. For people who, like, let's say a recruiter had to start recruiting in, in Estonia, what's, 
what's something that you have to do differently, or uh, how do you even start with a with a? As you said, it's a, yeah, talent being that small. How do you kind of start to look at who's out there? Yeah, I've seen many people, many recruiters coming from abroad and just writing to every developer there is out there and <laughs> being disappointed with not getting results. Because the thing is that in Estonia, you have to make the personal connection before you write to them. So uh, there's a lot of this um, going to meetups, uh, networking with uh, developers and different people you hire. And then when you've already established this, then you can actually approach them. So it's kind of the other way around. Uh, so every recruiter out there moving to Estonia, I just recommend uh, coming to Recruitment Thursdays, trying to understand what is this crazy country called Estonia, and, uh, and then just working a lot with their developers and other people to understand who to write to or not, because our developers get like five offers a day. Mm. But the good thing is that the Estonian government kind of understood that the companies can't just uh, sustain themselves by eating each other's employees because the salary levels were growing crazy in the past like a year. Uh, so now, uh, whenever you hire somebody from abroad, it can be even like a neighboring country, uh, you actually get a grant of 2,000 euros uh, just because um, they know it takes a lot of effort to hire them from abroad and they want to make sure that companies look outside, not inside anymore. What kind of uh, tools and tricks do you kind of use to... Uh... Yeah, to help your uh, your sourcing in. Yeah, so amazing hiring works really good in Estonia, so that's a huge help for me. And and overall, I think I just whenever I have a new position, uh, I I love doing new profiles. I just kind of uh, go into the mind of uh, what are these people in Estonia actually doing? Where they are? Are they in university meetup groups? But uh, mix max huge helper, um, crystal nose, multi-highlight. I, I just kind of uh, go crazy and then uh, try to mix it up every time I do it. So, What's, what's been your hardest role to fill and, and how did you kind of crack that one? Ah, good question. Oh, there have been so many, but um, I, I just met up with one of my managers and uh, we were thinking about the time when we were looking for an API evangelist. So somebody who's good at marketing, uh, good at sales, good at public um, presentations, and a developer. So uh, basically, uh, the kind of a joke is that Estonians are very introverted. So we knew right away that, that we won't get this person from Estonia. So we went globally around the world. We finally got a really nice Italian guy who wanted to move to Estonia. He's also a part-time singer, uh, so he's he's just an amazing, but he's one of a kind. And we knew it. We knew that we were going to look for a unicorn. And it was really hard to close. And I remember when I was doing the phone, to, a phone call to him, like, hey, this is the offer. We want you. And, and he said yes. And I literally felt like, this is my career. This is what I've done. I'm all good now. So, so yeah. But, uh, but also we had, um, so mobile is a huge part of pipe drive, uh, but it's also challenging in Estonia to find somebody for mobile. And uh, Latvia was kind of being close for us. So for them, they kind of liked Estonia, but they hadn't heard of the company as much. So the first mobile developer uh, I hired from there, he happened to be, of course I knew it, but he happened to be kind of like a spokesperson uh, in the iOS developers community. Uh, so when he came in, there were a lot of Latvian mobile developers who started coming in. So I think that's one of my proudest moments as well. I remember jumping up and down a bit, a bit more than I would say. I, I, I appreciate it. <laughs> and where do you see your, your kind of, where do you see yourself going, especially with like, yeah, roles in Estonia being kind of being everything um, in terms of sourcing, what, what are you still missing? What would you still like to learn? I'm actually going to change a job. So I've been here for three and a half years. I've done it all. I've seen it all. But uh, I'm now joining a hyper growth uh, startup in Estonia uh, for the for the first time ever recruiter uh, role that they wow. have. And it's already kind of crazy, but I like the fact that, that um, people there are very like hungry to do things. So very much this. Let's let's just do it, whatever cost. Let's just do it then. And I'm joining them in uh, December. And I'm very, very excited because I get to build up uh, the whole recruitment process of the company. I get to choose what I do, choose what I, what kind of tools I use. So I'm very excited. Of course, bittersweet moment because I'm leaving my baby. I've hired like one third of the company. 
but I'm very excited. So I think you should ask me again in a year or two to see if I'm still alive. But at the moment, I, I feel like I'm taking a big step and maybe one day uh, I'll go abroad, maybe not. But I'm of course to, um, I'm excited to actually work as a um, freelance sourcer for a while as well, because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm in house all the time. So I see only one company, but to do like freelance and uh, from abroad to really, um, go more into the technical sides that's definitely exciting yeah. because uh at the moment i will still continue on doing kind of everything <laughs> in the ones that i like so is it is it an estonian startup or is it a startup that wants to build up in estonia as well yeah so uh, the company itself is savory mm -hmm. and uh and uh it already has quite big customers around the world and um, it's, it's one of those companies that starts from Estonia, but will uh, just start to fly soon. So you'll hear about it a lot in the global market. And, uh, and of course, a lot of good people to hire. And, um, <laughs> and the big thing that I really cherish is the companies that um, really look for a cultural fit, you know, mm. that you're just not closing a position, but that the person is right. Yeah, because they know that longer term, it's going to make a bigger difference. Exactly. So uh, I'm excited for the high standards, the high numbers, the high expectations. And uh, let's see what happens. I'll be joining them soon. <laughs> no, that's good. Well, congratulations. That sounds really Thank exciting. You. Well, look, Christine, if uh, people want to keep following you and, and, and yeah, see where it takes you or when you, when you write things and, and give advice, where can they best find you? LinkedIn, of course. And of course, the big thing is that Soto is coming to Estonia in June 2019. We hope everybody to come in because uh, recruitment in Estonia is kind of crazy in a special kind of way. So I dare everybody to check it out because it will be a lot of fun. Perfect. Well, look, thank you very much for having time for me. Thank you very much. Have a good day. You Bye. Too. Bye.